Big T Steak Corner. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to take it back all the way to 2006. You have a 6800 GT. Unfortunately, it's AGP, so you can't even go out and check out all the cool new options with PCIe. But the good news is, NVIDIA has just come out with a 7800 GS AGP. This would be one of their last AGP graphics cards ever made. But you're wondering, is it really worth it to spend $400 yet again for another graphics card when you just spent that much about two years before? Well, today we're going to find out if the 7800 GS was really that much of an upgrade over the 6800 GT. are not only visually awesome, but they're also very technically awesome as well. The 6800 GT was Nvidia's second graphics card to feature GDDR3 SD RAM. Actually, their first graphics card and the first graphics card ever to have GDDR3 SD RAM was the 5700 Ultra. So if we take a look at these two cards, the 7800 GS actually has 8 ROPs instead of 16 like the G4 6800 GT. However, the 7800GS has a 560MHz core clock compared to the 6800GT's 350MHz core clock. On top of that, it has a 1200MHz effective memory clock versus the 6800GT's 500MHz memory clock. It should also be mentioned that both of these cards use a 256-bit memory bus, which at the time was really, really good. So. With all that said and done, let's take both of these 256 meg variant cards, put them side by side, see how they perform. The system we're using to benchmark these two graphics cards with is something I carefully put together. I'll have an entire video dedicated to this build uh, at a later date. But for now, all you need to know is it's a Pentium D945 at 3.40 GHz and 4 MB of level 2 cache. Uh, 512 megabytes of DDR2 RAM, 533 megahertz, operating on a true AGP 8X slot. With that said and done, starting with the 6800 GT, we're going to take things really slow. We're starting with Unreal Tournament 2003, everything completely maxed out, and of course the game runs like a dream. Really not a whole lot to say here. There aren't really even many dips below 60, if any. It's, you know, a perfect experience. So then I decided to step it up to Midnight Club 2. This game, while it is pretty CPU heavy, it can be a little graphical heavy as well, especially when there's a lot of particles on the screen. But we saw, once again, perfect experience on here. I believe the frame rate is capped naturally through the game's engine. It does not go above 60 FPS, but it didn't really dip either. So once again, just like Unreal Tournament 2003, a perfect experience. So then it was on to the real tests. Half-Life 2. This is a build from 2004. This is not the current Steam release. I've maxed all the settings out. Uh, less V-Sync, of course. And what you would expect from this is basically a 40 to 60 FPS experience. I found this certain part of uh, Root Canal is a little bit demanding. You can see that we're kind of hovering in between like the 40s and the 50s. But in other parts of gameplay, you'll find you're usually at about 60 FPS. But if there's action going on, we can see dips into the 30s sometimes, usually the 40s, but very, very playable. Juiced is the second last title we'll be looking at, and it was the title I was expecting to really struggle on this graphics card, and I was proven quite wrong. This 60 FPS experience you see here is because the area was a bit more open. When you're racing in the more city, high dense areas, You'll find you it'll go down into the 50s, but once again, extremely playable. And lastly, we had GTA San Andreas. Now, we had the settings almost cranked up fully here, and it was pretty cool. We saw about 40-ish FPS with anti-aliasing set to 2 and all the other settings for the most part cranked up. Uh, I was really surprised. This is a demanding game. Like, even some lower-end graphics cards from the more recent years have trouble running this game. But it runs quite well on this graphics card. So we've seen that the 6800 GT is actually quite a capable card. So now it's time to figure out if the 7800 GS is even more capable. 
We're gonna rerun all the tests, even the tests that did do 60 FPS, just for the sake of rerunning them. So let's find out. Unreal Tournament 2003 actually ran a little bit better, but it didn't really make much of a difference because either way you weren't dipping below 60 FPS. Um, and the dips were still about the same into the low 60s, so I would consider it pretty moot. Even with rain, more AI racers, and more AI traffic, and a more populated map, uh, Midnight Club 2 ran perfectly fine, which I expected it to, so no differences here. So comparing the two Half-Life 2 benchmarks, it's safe to say the 7800GS does run a little bit better, but with the constant drops that you get, even though they're not super significant drops, they're still drops into the 40s, sometimes even the 30s. I don't think that the gameplay is really too different from the 6800 GT in terms of what you would actually notice. Playing on the same track in Juiced, of course, there's no difference as well. One thing I should note though is when I mentioned racing in the urban areas, you actually do get a bit of a performance boost on the 7800 GS. It's not huge, but it definitely helps because there are times on the 6800 GT that you dip just a little bit below 30, and it makes the difference between playable and unplayable in those moments, I would say personally. And lastly, for the big challenge, GTA San Andreas, how does the 7800 GS perform? No different than the 6800 GT. They are almost identical. In fact, I'm gonna say they are identical in terms of performance. And you're just wandering around San Andreas, exact same frame rate no matter where you go. Now, I'm sure if we maybe turn down the anti-aliasing a bit, that would be a different story. But the fact is, these cars were kind of designed for higher end gaming. So it should be expected that you can turn up anti-aliasing just a little bit. That's not to say it wasn't playable, but at the end of the day, they performed the same. So there you have it. 7800 GS wasn't really that much of an upgrade over the 6800 GT, especially considering they both cost around the same price at launch, and it was only a two year difference between the two of them. Now these are both really really good cards. If you can find any in the AGP variant for like less than the eBay price, I highly suggest you pick them up because they're really really good cards. Now you will need a good processor to really unlock their full potential, but still, these make great little AGP cards for Windows XP builds. Before I go though, I think I need to tell you the dark dirty little secret of this 7800 GS. It has a lot in common with a blow dryer. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for more content.